Tonight on the Northwestern News Report, students return to in-person classes after two weeks of wildcat wellness, what the student government is telling faculty about the transition. Surgical masks are now required in shared community buildings. We'll tell you the science behind the decision. And a new interactive art studio sprays away stigma in Evanston. Those stories and more tonight on the Northwestern News Report. It's your news right, right now. now. Good evening and welcome to this week's episode of the Northwestern News Report. I'm Elena Halkiao. And I'm Liz Casalo. We start tonight with a look at COVID-19 on campus. Today marked the first day back in in-person classes since the Omicron surge. Andrew Rowan has more on how students are feeling and how ASG and the university are responding. So I think mentally I'm really ready to go back and physically I am really hoping that people stay healthy. It's the first day of school again. Wildcats heading to the classroom after a two week modified quarantine but amid an Omicron surge on campus and around the country. The situation we have at Northwestern is completely different than what you would expect sort of the public at large. This is a place with an incredible amount of mitigation. Provost Haggerty says it's safe to turn the classroom lights on, pointing to a vaccine and booster requirement, testing infrastructure, and a high-quality mask mandate. It continues to be the case that there isn't evidence of transmission in the classroom. Looming large over the return is last week's 4.81% positivity rate and 686 positive tests, but both numbers down from the prior week. And Northwestern has a, just a really strong commitment to in-person instruction. Some students say the school needs to do more to make sure those who are sick don't come to class. I have a class this morning where someone messaged in our group meet saying like, guys, I have strep throat symptoms, like it might be strep, but I really want to come to class. I'll just like sit apart from you. I'm like, why aren't we doing something so people don't have to do that? The student government is doing something. Because this was another major period of transition for professors. We felt that some of the feedback that we were getting from students would be really helpful for them to know. Prior to the start of the quarter, the ASG Academics Committee sending a letter to faculty with recommendations for, quote, the new normal, suggesting faculty utilize class recordings from last year, offer virtual office hours, and have flexible sick day and makeup policies. We want to stay in person, um, and so here are some of the recommendations that we'd like to make in order to have this happen. A petition signed by more than 800 undergraduate students and 500 graduate students asked the university to stop having in-person classes until a couple of demands are met. They want high quality masks provided to everyone at the university. They want take home tests provided to everyone. And they also want any student the ability to log into their classes remotely, a hybrid option. So far, the university did not respond to NNN's request for comment on that petition. From a classroom, Andrew Rowan, Northwestern News Network. The petition to extend virtual classes leading to a walkout earlier today. Students walking out of their lectures at 3 p.m. They want to see a decline in COVID cases on campus and more safety precautions before the return to in-person classes. The participants set up a Zoom link for students to gather instead of their classes while keeping distant and safe from COVID-19. According to Northwestern's COVID-19 dashboard, campus activity is at yellow, which means there are no increases in in-person activity. As students return to the classroom, new guidance from Northwestern on masks. Hannah Jiang brings us why and how you should wear the right mask. Double up in classrooms with at least a layer of high-quality mask and ideally another layer of cloth mask. At minimum, a surgical mask in shared spaces. Northwestern levels up their masking rules as classes return in person amidst almost 5% campus positivity rate. No longer is it a good idea to only use a cloth mask. Even better would be to get uh, what's called a respirator, KF94, KN95, or an N95. The CDC said Friday that the nationwide supply of respirator masks like KN95 is no longer a concern. I think it's it's sound policy. I wish they had done it sooner. Professor Fiala recommends respirator masks due to their complete seal. He said with lower quality masks. What's not caught though is the very fine particles, the ones that actually kind of get suspended in the air and then actually can hang out in the air. Professor Fiala said the fine particles potentially carrying coronavirus can linger in the air for two to four hours. This means that even if I'm alone in the room without proper masking, I could still be infected. 
He also said to assess if you could take your mask off to drink some water, it might be best to observe if you're in a well-ventilated space. Because this is all about, is there some kind of an HVAC system that is like sucking the air out? An email from Northwestern said the school has obtained some K95 masks. More information to come on the COVID update webpage. Surgical masks are available in the entryways of most campus buildings. Each student living on campus can now pick up two K95 masks from area desks. And so one day I would wear this one mask for all of my COVID patients, um, take it off at the end of the day, put it into this paper bag just so that it could breathe, seal it up for five days, go on to the next mask, you know, kind of cycle through one mask per day. Professor Fiala said it is best to use respirator mask and throw it away. But if you decide to recycle it, make sure to replace it when it gets too swelled or when the silk gets loose. From a classroom, Hannah Zhang, Northwestern News Network. In addition to the new masking requirements, Northwestern continues to enforce weekly testing for the third week of the quarter. All students who plan on attending in-person class are required to complete a COVID-19 test at a Northwestern testing site between today and Friday. Now, this came from Northwestern Vice President of Operations, Luke Figora, in an email last Friday. The testing centers are open from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and any students who have tested positive in the past 90 days are exempt from the requirement. At-home COVID tests are also available for pickup in Norris with your wildcard. As COVID cases rise, Evanston is issuing a vaccine mandate for all indoor businesses that serve food or drink. Ellie Skelly has more on how this affects the Evanston community. Vaccine verification order is one of those decisions that we are making to continue to keep us safe. The city of Evanston is joining Cook County in requiring all customers five years and older to show proof of vaccination at dining, fitness and entertainment venues. The direction is to protect our community. For Evanston Restaurant Found Kitchen, the mandate reassures they can remain open and operate safely. We have um, had people who are coming here because we, we require proof of vaccination. Northwestern junior Sarah Frank feels the mandate is a helpful precaution. It's nice to know that Everyone who who is also like sitting around me is vaccinated. A representative from Clark's off campus declined to be on camera, but told NNN they worry that staff members will quit because of the customers they are turning away. As Evanstonians adjust to the mandate, the process has become easier. People are coming in the door and they have it in their hand already. Both Evanston business owners and customers agree it is important to continue shopping or dining local. Hope restaurant goers continue to come out. Northwestern students venturing downtown should be ready to show their vaccine card. Ellie Skelly, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Ellie. For more information or questions concerning the mandate, visit the City of Evanston website. Coming up this, this Martin Luther King Jr. Day, Evansonians join together to support the city's homeless. And elections might be months away, but congressional re-election campaigns in Illinois have already begun. We'll be back in 60 seconds. At Northwestern, we're wildcats in every way. Western celebrates Martin Luther King Jr.'s life and legacy throughout the month with events, discussions, and service projects. All events will be online, including a keynote address next Monday. This year's speaker, investigative reporter, and Pulitzer Prize winner Nicole Hannah-Jones. Other events include a candlelight vigil in honor of King, hosted by Alpha Phi Fraternity last night. 
In Evanston, Interfaith Action honors Martin Luther King Jr. by hosting their third annual Walk for Warmth for the homeless. NNN's Maria Heim has the details. On Martin Luther King Jr. Day, Interfaith Action is walking today so that people have a warm place to stay. Consisting of nine faith communities, the organization provides homeless residents with safety and warmth in the winter. If you're homeless, you spend a lot of time walking from place to place. The date of the walk is no coincidence. The people we are working with um, in our organization are certainly the um, people who Martin Luther King was um, advocating for. Over 550 participants walking two miles and donating money to support the homeless. Having the Walk for Warmth seemed like a good way to um, raise awareness. Residents of all ages and backgrounds joining. Really great like to have so many people here. Local leaders walking with Evanstonians to show support. On Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, I think to remind ourselves about the essential radicalism of that message. That the walk comes as Evanston City Council looks to partner with local institutions to build new initiatives addressing homelessness. We are currently looking at allocating the federal money that we've received recently towards um, programs um, that will help those in need. Walking together to keep everyone safe and warm through the winter. Maria Heim, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Maria. You can donate to Interfaith Action on their website at interfaithactionofevanston.org. Evanston mental health experts and politicians want to establish an alternative to dialing 911 if you or a loved one is having a mental health emergency. Lily Wolfson has the story. The challenge is, the question remains, where do you take a person in crisis? Evanston mental health care organizations say the answer is to have a city living room a space for people in mental health crisis to go instead of a hospital. Having that resource where we can take people to um, and have, you know, again, like a trauma-informed environment um, is a really positive thing. Evanston residents have turned to Skokie's living room, which is housed at Turning Point Behavioral Health Care Center. It had 288 visits in 2021 with just one hospitalization, according to a City of Evanston memo. Now the city, with support from Mayor Biss, wants to bring the living room model to Evanston. And it just made sense to bring that really in our own backyard because we, we absolutely need it. The approximate cost would be $874,250, which would come from American Rescue Plan Act funding. When you send a trained mental health professional rather than a police officer for this crisis, um, that person can provide longer term support. The city's ideal location for its living room is this single family home at 311 Elmwood, owned by Amita St. Francis Hospital. This effort is only going to be successful if we get every bit of input and insight that we possibly can. Striving to make Evanstonians in crisis feel at home in a living room. Lily Wolfson, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Lily. Mayor Biss tells NNN that he hopes to bring a vote on whether to go forward with the living room within the next few council meetings. With the midterms in November, Illinois Democrats are gathering signatures needed to rerun for office. Michaela Denault brings us more from the party's re-election campaign launch last Saturday. Volunteers crowd into Skokie Sketchbook Brewery, where the Democratic Party of Evanston hands out posters and t-shirts supporting Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky and the state senators and representatives. I'm here at a re-election event for Illinois public servants. All are looking for Northwestern students to engage in their campaigns. You know, I've always um, invited uh, Northwestern students to get involved in, in the campaign. She says her campaign will focus on maintaining the blue majority as voting rights are on the line nationwide. And Republicans decided the only way they can win is by suppressing the vote. Aside from Schakowsky, State Representative for Evanston Robin Gable will continue moving the state and Evanston toward renewable energies and health care for all. It's really important to re-elect people like me who have been there, have the expertise, um, have the contacts, and have the leadership positions 
to get done what we need to get done. With these policies on the line, volunteers come out to ensure continued progress in the state. Illinois is really doing things right and has served as a model for the rest of our country. And so I think that it's really important to keep the people who have done that over the past few years and continue that trend. Kicking off campaign events in Skokie, Michaela Denault, Northwestern News Network. And Michaela joins us now in the studio. Michaela, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Melina. So how do these politicians uh, build and keep up momentum in their campaigns uh, from now until Election Day? Yeah, so Democratic politicians are uh, going out there rallying their voters. They're going door to door and talking about issues that voters really care about, like climate change and voting rights. And if a Northwestern student wanted to get involved in these campaigns, how could they do that? Representative Jan Schakowsky told me that she encourages Northwestern students to talk with her about issues that they really care about and also get engaged with Evanston community events. Thank you, Michaela. The politicians say that they need a specific number of signatures from party members in their district to get on the ballot for this year's elections. And we'll keep on doing events like these to get Democratic voters engaged. The Northwestern Prison Education Program, NPEP, becomes the first degree-granting program in the state to offer a complete liberal arts education to women in prison. I took a look at what this opportunity means. Art history, writing, and math are just three subjects undergraduate students may take during their time at Northwestern, but many NPEP students are taking the same classes while serving their sentences. We now provide a full liberal arts curriculum. Most of the program's incarcerated students started their college careers in Stateville Correctional Center, a maximum security prison for men roughly 50 miles off campus. Now, after receiving a $1 million grant from the Mellon Foundation, NPEP is accepting students at Illinois' only women's prison, Logan Correctional Center, around 200 miles from Evanston. If we are going to provide this opportunity to men, we are going to provide this opportunity to women. NPEP accepted 20 applicants for its first women's class in March 2021, while Logan was on lockdown due to COVID-19 concerns. The first module took place using only male correspondence. Former Logan inmate and NPEP student Maria Garza said students passed discreet notes to each other by folding up pieces of paper because they weren't able to receive instructor feedback until two to three weeks after assignments were turned in. Although in-person learning started in the fall, male correspondence resumed when the Omicron variant made the prison lock down again. As students starting new modules readjust to this learning style, the women are reflecting on what NPEP's expansion means to them. They still have to come out and get jobs and try to see how they pick up their lives. According to the program's director, NPEP helps uplift women behind bars. A restorative justice network recently hired Garza, and she is an advocate for the Fully Free Campaign, an initiative to end permanent punishments for formerly incarcerated individuals. Northwestern undergraduate admissions announcing they will not require SAT or SAT scores for the next admission cycle. They initially adopt the best optional policy for applicants in the class of 2025 and 2026 because of test cancellations from the COVID-19 pandemic. This announcement came last Friday after several other universities, including Harvard and the University of Pennsylvania, decided last semester to extend their test optional policies. If students choose to submit standardized testing scores, Northwestern will superscore the SAT or ACT. Students returning to in-person class might have to wait a while to see the sky. Why? I have this week's forecast after the break. At Northwestern, we're wildcats in every way. Our fair name and go Northwestern, win that 
Western University, we are pioneering innovation and achieving excellence across every imaginable discipline. At Northwestern University, the possibilities are endless. For any students planning to make the trip from Evanston down to Chicago in upcoming weeks, the Chicago Transit Authority is warning to expect delays. An increase of COVID-19 cases among CTA employees and a worker shortage has caused both service gaps in both trains and bus operations this past week. In a statement to NNN, the CTA says, quote, some days see moderate service impacts, other days may see significant impacts, meaning that customers may have to wait a few to several more minutes than usual for a train or bus. The CTA also says they continue to run as much service as possible, but to get more information about bus or rail service delays, visit transitchicago.com alerts. If you're looking to venture into the city, you might want to check the weather first. Olatunji Osha Williams has your weekly forecast. The return to in-person class will be mostly cloudy, with this week's temperatures climbing down to the mid and high 20s that we've had in past weeks. Tomorrow will be cloudy with high 20s in the morning and then slowly trailing into the teens in the afternoon. It's going to be windy with the wind blowing at a steady 16 to 15 miles per hour throughout the day. The sun makes an appearance this Thursday, and we're expecting a high of 18 and a low of 11. The sun will still be shining this Friday with a high of 24 and a low of 19. But this weekend's going to be cloudy. You might get away with a light jacket this Saturday, where you have a high of 29 and a low of 13. But this Sunday, you'll be needing your coat with a high of 21 and a low of 16. As the school returns to normal, the weather joins us too. I'm Olatunji Osha Williams, and this was your seven-day forecast. Thanks, Olatunji. Tonight, the men's basketball team will face off against the Wisconsin Badgers at Welsh Ryan Arena. It will be the first game with student spectators since their return to campus for winter quarter. Over the weekend, the men's and women's basketball teams playing Michigan State without any student fans in the stadium. The men won 64-62, but the women's team came home with a loss. All guests are required to show proof of a COVID-19 vaccination or a negative test within 24 hours of the event. Face masks must also still be required. Northwestern defensive lineman Joe Spivak has recently signed a deal with the WWE. NNN's Matthew Vega has more. On December 8th of last year, Northwestern football defensive lineman Joe Spivak announced on his Twitter that he had signed a name, image, and likeness deal with the WWE. So, then I have officially joined the newly announced NIL program. WWE, playing on the NIL acronym, calling it Next in Line, agreed to a deal allowing him training in media and communications, as well as access to the WWE Performance Center. WWE is taking a lot more of a investment approach, investing in young athletes. He plans to try out and hopefully become a full-time wrestler for the WWE, something Spivak said he first thought about during his time as a Wildcat. Especially like Spanos and Coach Orozco and Coach Flan, like the strength coaches and stuff, um, we started talking about WWE and they're always like, oh, Spivs, like you'd be a great fit. Spivak's deal with the WWE has been in production even as far back as his freshman year. I said I was talking to him for a while, uh, but this fall was when all the NIL started clicking. Last July, changes within the NCAA allowed athletes to make money off their names, images, and likenesses, or NIL for short. Spivak says he hopes his prowess on the football field will translate easily to his performance in the squared circle. After all, WWE champions Roman Reigns, Joe Goldberg, and even Dwayne The Rock Johnson were all college football athletes. You know, I've always prided myself on not just being a strong guy, but a very quick and mobile guy. Spivak is eyeing WWE's developmental brand, NXT, which shifted focus this fall to focus on younger athletes as a place to make his mark on the industry. The new direction of NXT is very, very exciting. They're appealing to younger crowd. Putting away his purple helmet in search of a title belt, Matthew Vega, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Matthew. Spray painting the town, stick around to find out more about Evanston's new spray paint studio. At Northwestern, we're wildcats in every way. Northwestern breaks.
time we will cheer you all the go go you northwestern fight for the top sweet victory for the fame of our fair name and go northwestern win that game go cats at northwestern university we are pioneering innovation across every imaginable discipline. At Northwestern University, the possibilities are endless. At Northwestern, we're wildcats in every way. A spray paint studio just opened in Evanston and is welcoming guests for a fun and creative experience. And it ends Logan Schigiano reports for us how the founders of Studio Whip are shaking up the stigma around spray paint. I started spray painting when I was about 14 years old. From a young age, Max Unterhasselberger and his friend Adam Dittman were hooked. You know, growing up in the 90s, I loved fresh prints, I loved living color. I loved Nickelodeon, those vibrant colors, and it, it kind of like always reminded me of, of spray paint. After COVID cost them their jobs, and they saw the images of their city boarded up in the wake of George Floyd's murder, they were inspired to put their talents towards something good. We started painting um, the boarded up businesses that were still active. Kind of like let people know like, hey, we're here, we're doing this, we still go to your favorite small retailer, small business. From there, the two former restaurant employees joined forces and began teaching spray paint classes at their new studio in West Humboldt Park. Just months later, they got an assist from an unlikely source. Perfect for a creative date night, but you can also go with friends. We went viral on TikTok for our spray paint workshops. A 2,700% increase in business allowed Studio Whip to expand into a new location in Evanston this past December. This is exactly um, the opportunity that we were looking to capitalize on and uh, we haven't looked back since. And as the studio continues to welcome the Evanston community, the next step for them is to begin selling spray paint and accessories here in house for all to enjoy. From the studio in Evanston, Logan Schigiano, Northwestern News Network. Northwestern students who are interested in checking out Studio Whip can sign up for a group lesson on the website below and use code WILDCATS to get a discount. Melina, what are your thoughts on this spray paint studio? Are you ready to go on over there? I love it. I really want to do it. It sounds so fun and it looks amazing, all the colors, everything. I just, I really, we should, we should plan it. We should it. go. I think yeah. that would be a really fun outing. I think um, so. What's the first thing that you would draw or paint, I guess? Ooh, I don't know, I'm, really, I'm not good at painting, but, you know, I'll, I'll improvise. We'll figure it out. Yeah. That's all the time we have for tonight. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the Northwestern News Report. I'm Liz Casalo. And I'm Mela Halkia. Good night.